Hi there, I'm Stephen Chu, and this is another episode in a series of videos on the cognitive challenges of effective teaching, a series created by Bill Serban and myself. In this video, I'm going to talk about the cognitive challenge of selective attention. So I'm going to start with an example that comes from the teaching of psychology. So let's say that uh, I was teaching about classical conditioning, which was first studied uh, extensively by Ivan Pavlov using dogs. So I might uh, have a picture of dogs or a picture of puppies in this case uh, on the screen as I explain the different terms in class conditioning, conditioned stimuli, unconditioned stimuli, and so forth. So I expect that the students are listening to my uh, explanations of the terminology and the procedures used in classical conditioning, when in fact the students may be completely distracted by this uh, by the cute puppies. So they may be thinking to themselves, oh, you know, I love puppies, or, you know, just this great seeing these puppies, or I miss my dog. Their, their minds are distracted uh, from what they're supposed to be talking about. In this case, uh, I'm competing with my PowerPoint. And selective attention prevents us from paying attention to more than one source of information at a time. That's what selective attention is all about. Let's uh, take a look at uh, how this fits into the overall memory system. So we start uh, with the simplified model of learning materials out here in the environment. It all goes in through the senses. It's held in sensory memory. And then here we have attention. Attention does two things for us. It selects information. Uh, for further processing, we, we uh, select what's relevant and we filter out everything that's irrelevant uh, and allows us to focus and concentrate on information. So the focus and concentration is another challenge that's discussed in a separate video. What we're going to be talking about is the selective nature of attention. What gets selected uh, is sent on into working memory. And what's not selected uh, is basically filtered out or blocked at, the, at this point. And then if the information is uh, rehearsed in an elaborative way, in a meaningful way, it makes it a long-term memory, which is, of course is the ultimate uh, goal of teaching. So we are over here in attention, and attention is both a choke point and a pitfall uh, if, uh, in the cognitive system. It's a choke point uh, in that uh, you have a lot of information uh, that gets um, uh, narrowed down you know, to a very little information. So that's what the selective nature of attention does. It takes a, a vast amount of information and it filters out all but a very small uh, amount of information. Whatever you decide to pay attention to, that's what you're going to be aware of. And everything else that's not paying, uh, that's not attended to is going to get uh, filtered out. Uh, it's functional and that prevents us from being overwhelmed and constantly distracted. So uh, selective attention makes uh, a, you know, perfect sense. Um, the problem, though, is when our attention is drawn uh, to uh, stimuli that are not relevant for, for learning, we're distracted. So distractions are very hurtful to learning because we can't pay attention to more than one uh, stream of information at, at a given time. So it's a pitfall because students think they can multitask. They can uh, like pay attention to these other things uh, while they're supposed to be paying attention to whatever the teacher is talking about, uh, and they really uh, can't multitask. You can really only focus on, on uh, one source of stimulation or one source of information uh, at a time. Okay, so the uh, metaphor that's typically used uh, in selective attention is that it's like a small spotlight in a darkened room. So uh, you look at a scene, uh, and you're taking in the scene, but actually you can only pay attention to a small part of the scene at any given time. You can't take in the whole scene at, at once. Okay, your attention actually has uh, to be focused on different uh, different parts of a, of a scene. Okay, so that's why attention is like a small spotlight in a darkened room. Where this metaphor falls short though, is that people tend to think they're seeing everything. So they're missing a lot because of selective attention. They're missing anything outside the focus of attention, but they're not aware of it. They actually think that they're seeing uh, everything. Now, this selective nature attention has uh, some really important implications. Anything that draws our attention away from the relevant information hurts learning. Ideally, you are paying attention to uh, like whatever is, is going on in the classroom, you know, the, the presentation or, or the PowerPoint. Um, but anything that draws your attention away from what you're supposed to be paying attention to uh, is going to is going to hurt. 
Okay. And especially if the professor is, is um, uh, providing two different sources of information at the same time, like, you know, information on a PowerPoint slide while they're talking about something that's not on the PowerPoint slide, then you've created a situation where uh, the students can't pay attention they, uh, to both at, uh, at once. So uh, students will try to multitask. Uh, they'll try to text or check the social media. Uh, their attention will be distracted. And because of the nature of selective attention, they won't realize how much they're, they're missing. Now, there's a number of, of uh, phenomena that have been studied related to selective attention, which explain why it's such a challenge. Number one is inattentional blindness, uh, where uh, when we're distracted, we miss a huge amount of information, uh, but we're not aware of the, uh, all the information that we've missed. Uh, there's many uh, great examples of inattentional blindness uh, on, on the internet. You just need to uh, search for examples of inattentional blindness, the classic one, had to do with uh, a gorilla that was, uh, you know, moving through a scene. But if you weren't focused on the, the, the gorilla, you missed it uh, completely. Many variations of that. Attentional blink uh, is when you have to shift your attention between uh, two different stimuli. Uh, you can't just easily shift attention from one uh, 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 stimulus to another. There's actually a, 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 a several minute um, uh, time period where your attention just simply is uh, is unfocused. So if you're distracted from something you're doing, you can't immediately go back to full focus. Uh, you have this this point this of a few minutes uh, where you simply have to redirect your attention, and you know that's suboptimal learning during that time. That's the attentional blink. So when students are multitasking, uh, they're shifting their attention back and forth. Uh, and every time they shift it, there's uh, like three to five minutes of just suboptimal attention that's going on. That's attentional blink. And both inattentional blindness and attentional blink explain why we can't multitask. Okay. So um, those are the, that, that's the challenge of selective attention in learning. Okay. So how does this play out in the classroom? Here's a study that was done in 2018. Uh, looking at different forms of distraction in the classroom. Uh, they did a pretest uh, uh, for students uh, on what the uh, class was going to be about, and the students were basically the same in the pretest. Uh, then they taught three course, uh, three class periods. Uh, one class period has no distraction. The second class uh, had uh, texting, where they were actively texting uh, a person. And the third was where they were allowed to explore their social media, whatever social media that they wanted to uh, during the class. What you can see in the post-test after several classes um, is that in the no distraction condition, you got uh, the greatest amount of learning. And then the texting condition, you got a significantly uh, lower level of learning. And then the social media condition, you got an even lower level of, of, of learning uh, there. So those distractions by texting or social media uh, will hurt uh, uh, learning through selective attention. You can only pay attention to one uh, uh, source of, of information at a given time. And if that source of information isn't what you're supposed to be paying attention to, then it's going to hurt your learning. So how do we deal with selective attention? There's a number of ways of, 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 of trying to do this. Uh, it is a huge problem in, in teaching. Uh, the first one, the most basic one, is to have only one easily identified point of focus at any given time during the class. So part of teaching is attention management, knowing where your class's attention is supposed to be focused. Is it either on the PowerPoint slide or is it on me? If it's supposed to be on me and not the PowerPoint slide, then you can blank out the, uh, the PowerPoint slide while you're talking and just take it away. Uh, now, you know, be aware that every time you put up a new PowerPoint slide, the students are going to be paying attention to that. They're going to be trying to copy it down. Uh, give them a chance to copy it down. You know, don't uh, try and distract them what they're, uh, what they're doing. Or some uh, uh, faculty members provide the PowerPoint slides. That depends on the kind of class that you're teaching, whether that's effective uh, or not. But always have one easily identified point of focus at a given time. And I've got this uh, note, beware of seductive details. So seductive details are like uh, GIFs or designs or clip arts uh, uh, or pictures, amusing cartoons on, um, on slides that take uh, away uh, students' focus, right? 
Seductive details actually hurt learning. Now you can have these kinds of things on your uh, in your presentation. Just don't have them during times where they need full focus on important information. So beware of the use of, of seductive details. Uh, always have uh, just the bare uh, uh, information there for full focus. So if you notice that students are their attention is wandering, reorient them uh, to the topics. You can actually just say, you know, uh, take a break or just pause uh, and then, you know, give students a chance to kind of refocus their attention. Like I notice you're, you're paying it to your, you know, minds are wandering, you know, the, this is really an important point you need to, you know, everyone needs to pay attention to. So regather their, their attention and their focus when it starts to wander, uh, especially in areas where they need to pay uh, special attention. And you can signal this just by saying, here's something that's really important, or you really need to pay close attention to this, or this is an area where a lot of students get confused. So it's really critical that you pay attention here. Okay, now the next one is to make in, uh, presentations engaging, informative, and valuable. I know we try to do this anyway, uh, but with uh, digital um, devices, uh, the stakes are much higher. Uh, students always have at their at their access uh, easy access to uh, you know videos and things that are probably more engaging, entertaining than than what you're talking about. So you have to set the norm that what you are talking about. Uh, will be informative and valuable uh, to them. So they need to think that if they uh, are distracted, if they're uh, multitasking, they may actually miss something that's important. You need to set that norm uh, that what you're talking about is always informative, always valuable. So the students uh, should get in the habit in your class of paying attention to what you're talking about because there's not a lot of filler, there's not a lot of uh, seductive details. Uh, it is a steady stream of important information. Uh, if worse comes to worse, take a short break. Uh, you know, allow students a chance to uh, review their notes or give them a, a media break. Some student, some uh, faculty do that. Uh, give them a chance to uh, sort of relax and rest, and then re-engage them uh, in uh, in the important information that you're you're sharing with them. Um, and then you can also just uh, help students become aware. Uh, that multitasking is not effective. Uh, there are demonstrations uh, for this to show students that, that multitasking is a really a, um, really makes learning harder and not uh, easier, and they really hurt themselves uh, in doing that. Those are different ways of, of dealing with the challenge of selective attention. So uh, for more, more information on selective attention and how to uh, try to address this challenge, uh, you can look at uh, Bill Serban's website, Taking Learning Seriously. He has a section on that. Uh, plus, I have a couple of other resources, a video by Dan Willingham, uh, which explains it. And it uh, can be used in class to explain to your students why uh, multitasking is really uh, harmful to them. Uh, and then there's a, a really useful blog post on the nature of multitasking and selective attention uh, that can you read for, uh, for more information. Here are some discussion questions uh, that you can discuss with your colleagues uh, to talk about how uh, selective attention becomes is a challenge in a class you, you teach and to discuss different ways you try and get around that, uh, that, that challenge. So uh, that's the challenge of selective attention. Thank you for your attention and I'll see you on the next video.